Our first 24 hours in Mexico had been a success. After planes, buses, and ferries, we had arrived in one of the best known dive meccas of Mexico, the island of Cozumel. After one of the craziest night dives we'd ever experienced, it was time to explore the island's famous reefs, walls, and drift dives. And what better day to do it than on Women's Dive Day? The breakfast of champions. You ready for scuba? Yeah. Looks like a bunch of freaking gear geeks walking out of that hostel. We got the whole gang loaded up and we're getting ready to head out for a couple of fun dives with a bunch of JP's friends. Say hello ladies. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Me llamo Valentina. My name is Anna. Are you guys excited for diving today? Yes. yes. We're excited. <laughs> Today is a special day. It's Women's Dive Day, um, but for me as a professional in the industry, as a female, um, I can definitely say that it is important that we celebrate this kind of stuff because I notice all the time that there's so many more men than women as divers. That was crazy. It was so cool. We were in the, what do they call the place where the hobbits are from? Oh, uh, the Shire. We were like in the Shire. I don't know all the terminology for the hobbit, but we were somewhere pretty magical today, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Final thoughts on Cozumel and Cozumel diving. Um, cool things about the diving, uh, the currents. The currents are definitely strong. Uh, you can just ride them. Uh, I did kick. It feels like flying. It really does. You can't help but just stick your arms out and legs out to the side. And it's probably the closest that you can get on Earth to the feeling of flying. Yeah. I really believe that. Yeah. It was so fun. Like, even if we didn't see anything, I could have been down there for 45 minutes just 
She yeah. really just zipping through the current. It was great. Coral was absolutely bonkers, as it normally is impressive in the Caribbean, but more so. It would be like these long walls, and then there would be all these like massive swim throughs mm -hmm. that were just laced with all this like orange coral that looked like the roots of trees, and it felt like you were swimming in some kind of like crazy magic forest. Mm -hmm. It was. It was really cool. I've heard about Cozumel for years. It's been high on my list, and it did not disappoint whatsoever. It's certainly not off the beaten path in terms of dive destinations, and yeah. I think to some people that might be off-putting if you prefer to you know, dive more remote places, but man, it was sweet. Maybe like one of our top 10 dives of all time. And the, the dive shop that we went with, Scuba Life, went like so far above and beyond yeah. our expectations of hospitality yeah. and we had a lot of fun. JP, if you're watching this, thanks yeah, for having us. Was cool. It was really nice getting to know you guys and uh, yeah. having you show us like your favorite places yeah. to dive. It was really cool. Thank you. We're on our way back to Playa del Carmen and then we just have a short walk to the bus stop and then we take a bus to Tulum and then we're staying the night in Tulum and we're going to do our first cenotes dive tomorrow morning. How hot are you on a scale of 1 to 10? It's pretty moist. Yeah. Fun fact, we almost called this channel moist. We took a, we took a little pull on that. People weren't so keen to that. But you would have remembered it. <laughs> Love it or hate it, you would have remembered those, those moist guys. This is our massive collection of bags that we've been hauling around through the city center and between all these crowded lines of people waiting to get on the bus. I've heard really good things about Tulum. It's known for the cenotes, which are these really cool caves that we're going to show you guys a lot of that you can dive in. And it's just meant to be kind of like, a, you know, whereas Cozumel and Playa de Carmen is cruise ships and resorts and stuff, Tulum is meant to be a little more laid back and it's more... Like a, little, a little hippie town, I think. Yeah. <laughs> like, we need the poo. I was getting stuck. Yeah. There it goes. It looks like I'm not doing anything, but it's because I set my bags down to film, but I already carried two bags up, so. <laughs> we did it. A couple days in the hostel and knowing we're going to be in a van the next several days, we thought, let's splurge and get a $20 Airbnb. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> this place is only 20 bucks. This is our bed. Looks so big and comfy. And if that's not comfy enough, then you can find yourself a nice little spot in the hammock right there. <sighs> yes. <laughs> Feels so good to lay down for a minute. So we have approximately seven minutes to just kind of chill out. And then um, some new friends are gonna come pick us up. There are these two dudes that own the camper van company that we're gonna be renting a camper van for, uh, from for the next couple days. So they're gonna come pick us up and we're gonna go grab some tacos and maybe a couple drinks. Soy Luz Garcia, cofundador de Van Balam, junto con Omi. We got to know the Van Balam crew, who would turn out to be some really great friends of ours. We grabbed a couple of Modelos and got the rundown on all the best spots to check out in the van, and got our first taste of Omid's amazing ability to make up ridiculous stories on the fly. So you can tell the age of a dog by uh, flicking its tooth, you know? Like, if you flick the dog's, like, canine tooth, then uh, if it sounds like a B minor, then he's like two years old. If it's, uh, <laughs> if it's an F sharp, he's like five. Um, and anything like, you know, a G, a G sus seven, it's like a, under a one, uh, you know, it's a baby. And if you get a, like a little wooden stick and you play the front teeth, and it sounds kind of like uh, Pasha Bell in D minor, and then it's like a, it's like an old dog. It's an old dog. You, need, you don't need Bill to be a, you don't need to study six years to the, for this stuff. You know, you just need to have good ear. 
We were pretty beat from our sweaty day of travel, but we couldn't call it a night without checking out a spot called Beatty's, which is probably one of my top five coolest bars I've ever seen. This place has perfected the art of the mojito, and instead of using simple syrup to sweeten it, they fresh press sugarcane in a converted VW bug right in the middle of the bar. So far, Tulum was shaping up to be a pretty special place, and we hadn't even gotten underwater yet. Tune in next time as we die and go to scuba heaven in the world's largest underwater cave system. Then we settle in for a bit of van life in the jungle. <laughs>